welcome viewers to another episode in this series of episodes where we've continued to look at the 2023 internal mathematics paper 2. If you haven't seen the other episode, please check out on our YouTube channel and also don't forget to download the companion app where we'll be able to find all the exam past papers, quizzes that we can help to practice. Remember, practice makes it permanent. We look at question 8. Start the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So this question is from transformation. So question 8A is, describe fully a single transformation which maps triangle ABC on two triangle A1, B1, C1. So if you compare these two, we have this triangle and this triangle. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves are these questions. As the size of the shape changed, is in terms of the area, as the area increased or reduced, so the area is maintained so it can only be one of the three which can be translation deflection and rotation then the next question is are the corresponding sides facing each other so if you notice we have a a then you have b b so these two when you join these lines one like that they are crossing so they are not facing each other correspondingly so this cannot be translation Translation, they have to face each other. So it's going to be between deflection and rotation. So we need to ask ourselves, now we've taken out translation. Is it reflection? If it's a reflection, they will have a mirror line in such a way that they are facing each other. So this one, again, cannot be reflection because of B. B is this side, this side, A, this side, this side. These are on the same line. So if the reflection line was the x-axis, what you notice is we're going to have B here, A here, then it's going to be something like that. So notice that these are corresponding, so it can't be reflection. So this is a rotation. So if it is rotation, we need to find the center of rotation. So how do we find the center of rotation? So to find the center of rotation, we need to join the points. So we join this point. Then we're going to join this point. Then we're going to join this point to see, like that. Then we do the perpendicular lines. So notice that the perpendicular line will pass through the origin. So this tells you that this is rotation. Now, since it's rotation, we need to find the angle of rotation. So we need to find the angle of rotation because we can describe rotation by finding the angle of rotation. So what we do is we notice that if you join A1 to A1, they are passing through the, the rotation. So meaning this angle of rotation is 180 degrees. So A it is it could be clockwise or anticlockwise it will still be the same clockwise rotation of 180 degrees about the origin which is zero comma zero that's it once you do that you're good to go then you can move to question b so question B, triangle ABC mapped on two triangle AB2, C2, not on the diagram by an enlargement of 1,0 and scale factor of 2. Find the coordinates of this. So we have this is the coordinates we are looking for. So how do we find the coordinates? So the center of enlargement is not the origin but 1,0 and of this factor. So to find the corresponding coordinates, we need to use the formula when the enlargement is not at the at the center. So you can do by calculation, you can do by drawing. So let us go by calculation. So it will be x1, y1. So this is the general formula equals k, where this is the, 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 the enlargement factor, then 0, then 0, then k, then multiply by x, y, respective original coordinates then R S then plus R S where R and S are the coordinates of so from what will be given we have the center is 1 comma 0 so meaning R is equal to 1 S is equal to 0 then K is equal to 2 so now we can now start finding the coordinates one by one so if you go and look at A1 we look at A1, which is this one, which is 1, 2. 1, 
comma 2. Then we can come here and say we are finding a two coordinates. So it will be x1, say x2, y2, like this, equals 2, 0, 0, 2. Then what are the coordinates of a? We said it's 1, comma 2. So it's 1, then 2, then minus r, which is 1, then minus 0, then plus 1, 0, like this. So this tells me that I'm going to have 2, 0, 0, 2, then 0, 2, then plus 1, 0, like this. So at this point is just a matter of dealing with him. the matrices. So it will be this one multiplied by this one. What you notice is 2 times 0 is 0, then 0 times 2 is 0. So we are going to have 0 on top. Then next it will be 0 times 0 is a 0, then 2 times 2 is a 4. So we are going to have a 4 down here. Then plus we have 1 comma 0 which gives me 1 comma 4 so meaning a2 is equal to 1 comma 4 we do that, that one then we move to b b2 coordinates so again to be x2 y2 then equals so we go and look for the coordinates of b which is here 3 comma 2 so we start by multiplying by 0, 0, 2, then to be 3 comma 2, so it will be minus 1, then 0, then plus 1, similar like we did for, for A. Then at this point, simplifying this will give us equals, so we are going to have the original this, this, this then multiply by 2, so it will be 2 comma 2 so 2 comma 2 then plus 1 comma 0 like this then it will be this multiplied by that so it's going to be 4 there 4 plus 0 is 4 then 0 then 4 plus like this which will give me 5 comma 4 so meaning b2 is equal to 5 comma 4 then we can look at C2 coordinates, which again will be x2, y2, like this, which is equal to 2, 0, then 0, 2. Then we need to look at C. C will be, here is a 3, so it will be 3, comma 4. So it will be 3, comma 4 minus C. 1 then minus 0 and plus 1 comma 0 like this then at this point we just simplify so what is important is just paying attention on the multiplying so we are going to have 2 0 then 0 2 then 3 minus 1 is a 2 then 4 minus 0 is a 4 so it's a 2 then 4 then plus like that and start multiplying we are going to have 2 times 2 is a 4, 0 times plus 0, 0 times 4 is a 4, then 0 times 2 is a 2, then plus, so it will be this one times that one, then plus this one times that one, then the first one it was this one times that, it was this one times that one, then this one times that, so we are going to have 80 here, then plus, like that, which will give me 5,8. So 5,8 or C2 is equal to 5,8 like that. So that's the answer. So once you do that, you're good to go. Then you get these marks. What you notice is this question is a bit involving. Then we'll look at question C. Given that triangle A1, B1, C1 is mapped onto triangle A3, B3, C3 by a stretch. Find the invariant line, the scale factor. And that's three max. So, how can we find the the two? So, in a stretch transformation, all other points move on the line perpendicular to the line of invariant points, which are 
either the x-axis or the y-axis. So what you are told is we have B1, if you notice it's B1, C1 and A1 are mapped onto this. So the triangle is, we are moving this triangle, this one, is being mapped onto this triangle. Okay, that's what is happening. So now we take note that invariant line can either be x-axis or y-axis, but what is key is transformation points are, are under stretch, they move perpendicular to the line of invariant. So if you notice that this is being stretched upwards, so the invariant line should be the x-axis. So therefore we are saying the invariant line is in the x-axis, that's the first one. So I'm going to write it here, so this will be will be will be will be seen. So thus based on the explanation the invariant line line is in the x axis. Okay, that's it Loma numero one. Then we need to look at Loma numero two. Loma numero two is asking us to find the scale factor. So to find the scale factor we just need to compare distance of an image from the invariant line then distance of the object from the invariant line. So we just need to pick one point. So in this case, we can pick either A or B or C. The answer will still be the same. So we'll just pick the corresponding, how far is it from the invariant line? That's what we do. So if I pick T any point, let us say I pick C, C is on 4, 4 from 0, then the corresponding C is on 8. So meaning, we just compare, it's 8 divided by 4, which will give me 2. So, like I said, the scale factor is the distance of the image from the invariant line divided by distance of the object from the invariant line. Or, alternatively, I'll use a different color. K will be, if I pick T, say B, B is negative 2, so it's 2 from the 0, then B3 is 4, so it will be 4 divided by 2, it will still give me a 2. So, the scale factor is 2, like that. Then, we look at the last question. Triangle ABC is mapped onto triangle A4, B4, C4 by a shear factor. Find the matrix of this transformation. So here we just need to solve the matrix. What you do is we just need to pick the corresponding points and form the, the, the matrix. So let us call this matrix to be A, B, C, D. That's what it means. So now if this matrix multiply it with him, the original coordinates of this so what are the original coordinates? So you can just pick any coordinates. Pick any coordinates. You can just pick any corresponding coordinates. So you can pick 1, 2, which is A. Then you can also pick, let us say, 3, 4, which is C. So using this one and this one, you don't need to get everything. So what this tells me is, I'm going to have 1, 2, this is A. Then this is C, which is 3, 4. We multiply by that should give me the corresponding values of A4 and C4. So what is in A4? So A4 is this one, which is 5,2. So 5,2. Then what is C4? C4 is this one, which is 11,4. 11,4. Then we need to solve this equation simultaneously. Just expand like that. So at this point you start multiplying, so we're going to multiply, you multiply this one by this column and the, this column. So this one by that one will give me this and that, the pairs. So it will be A times 1, which is A plus B times 2, which is 2B. So it will be A plus 2B must equal to the first entry, what's the first entry? 5. So this will be a 5. The next, it will be A times 3, which is 3A, plus B times 4, which is 4B, must give me 11. So I'm going to get 3A plus 4B, must is equal to 11. So this is equation 1, this is equation 2. Then we need to look for the other pair of equations, which is the below one. So it will be this one now, multiplied by A, column A, and this respectively. So this one, the first one multiplied by this one will give me this value. Then the second one to be this one multiplied by this one to give me this value. 
so that's what we do so it does proceed so there will be similarly but just the values that will change so it will be c plus 2d must be equal to must be equal to 2 then to be 3c plus 4d must be equal to the last one which is 4 so you notice that equation 3 this side they will pair with equation 1 then equation 2 then solve this simultaneously so what i can just do is solve these pairs simultaneously so it will be a is equal to 5 minus 2b then substitute whatever there is a in this second equation i replace so it will be 3 multiplied by 5 minus 2b plus 4b must be equal to 11 so i'm going to get 15 minus 6b plus 4b must be equal to 11 so i'm going to get 15 minus 2b must be equal to 11 so minus 2b is equal to 11 minus 15 so 2b minus 2b is equal to uh, minus 4 then i can self say now minus 2b is equal to minus 4 then divide by minus 2 minus 2 so therefore b equals 2 then if b equals to 2 then i can use this formula use this formula to solve for for m so what it tells me is a is equal to 5 minus 2b so you see 5 minus 2b so a is equal to 5 minus 2 times 2 so a is equal to 5 minus 4 which is a is equal to 1 so i know the value of a now so similarly we're going to solve for d and c so we make c the subject of formula in the first one so going to have c is equal to 2 minus 2d so now in this equation the, the fourth equation whatever they see we're going to substitute this function so it will be now 3 times 2 minus 2d plus 4d equals 4 so it will be 6 minus 6d plus 4d is equal to 4 so meaning we have 6 minus 2d is equal to 4 then minus 2d is equal to 4 minus 6 which gives me minus 2d is equal to minus 2 then we divide by 2 we divide by 2 so d is equal to 1 okay then we can find c we can find c by using this equation so what this tells me is c is equal to 2 minus 2d so meaning of 2 minus 2 times 1 so 2 minus 2 which is equal to 0 so c equals 0 so now we can find the matrix because we know what a is we know what b is we know what d is so that matrix now becomes a b c d is equal to a is 1 b is 2 so it becomes 1 2 then we have 0 then 1 so we have 0 then 1 so this is the matrix we are looking for so once you do that you are good to go and you get the 12 marks so thank you for joining me except that this question takes a bit of time it's a bit involving so join me in the next episode i will look at question 9